Welcome to Ryza, a walkthrough guide. Here we have a simple frame, two columns with the beam with a point load on the top. We are trying to find what the point load needs to be for the structure to fail. First we will open Ryza and adjust the global parameters. Here we're going to choose the number of sections. And here we will apply the different codes that we would like to use on this problem. We'll select AISC 9th edition. And you can also adjust the concrete and seismic codes. Here we'll be checking the units so that we're familiar with what units we're in. Now we will be modifying the grid so that it is 15 wide by 12 tall to make it simpler to draw the structure. Now we will begin creating our different sections. First we'll begin by labeling by labeling our columns and defining from scratch what our column is. Select a tube, go click on add and then type in the different dimensions that you're that it requires. We will be doing the same thing with the beams. And they can be found at the bottom of the selection menu. set up the beams also. Now we'll be modifying the material properties. In this case we're using a modulus of 30,000 KSI instead of the preset 29,000. And now we'll begin drawing our members. Just click and point, right click to deselect, left click to select. Now we're going to name the members to make them easy to identify. Next, we will uh, set the boundary conditions for the columns. Uh, you can either pick the preset boundary conditions or you can define your own. So we'll pick for the left column, will be fixed. And you can apply it by just clicking on the end of the column. And the right column will be pinned. So now we're going to create our load case. Um, we will ignore gravity. And now we will apply our load uh, to the beam, starting with one kip. Here we will be establishing our load combination. In this case we'll call it case 1. You can choose to add 
in key delta effects. In this case, we will be ignoring them. We will be assigning it our case. factor of 1. Here we will be using the load combination generator. You can use it to add in load combinations from different codes. Here we'll be using ASCE 2005 strength. And now we will go through and solve the frame. We will be using the case that we assigned it. Click Solve. Now we will be looking at member stresses to identify the critical member. In this case it is the beam. adjusting the load to make the beam fail and yielding. And resolving the problem. We will again look at member stresses. Notice that the beam moment is greater than the allowable moment. Next we will be taking a different Look at the model. And here we are viewing the moment diagram of the frame. viewing the different color-coded members. And this allows a detailed look into the different member results with shear and bending diagrams and deflection. Notice that on the beam, the moment diagram was greater than 36, meaning it yielded. Next, we will be modifying the structure so that it fails in a different manner. In this case, we're modifying the columns to be twice as tall. changing the Y factor to a value of 2. And now we will be modifying the beam to be deeper so that the beam does not want to yield as easily. Again, we'll be adding in a new section and changing the beam property to that new section. Now we will be resolving the structure and re-examining the results. Notice this time that the stress in the beam is less than yielding while the buckling capacity of the columns is exceeded. be taking a de uh, detailed look into the members. And notice on the right hand side column it says that the column is wanting to buckle. So basically this concludes our guidelines as to how to make this frame go from one mil uh, one mode of failure, which was the beam failing and yielding, to another mode, which was the column buckling.